Tower of Egotism Nimrod jumped the steps of the tower three at a time with powerful, energetic strides. He stood at the top of the tower just as the first rays of sunrise shone on it. The entire populace for miles around saw his large, muscular frame capping the monstrously imposing structure. He ushered in the new day and formalized his status as king and god. Nimrod's priests offered conventional sacrifices and libations. The smell of burning animal fat and incense filled the air. He strode to a room below the top of the tower where he consumed a sumptuous breakfast of bread, beef, eggs, and vegetables with a savage appetite. He ate in front of his lieutenants and servants, all awaiting his slightest fancy. Satiated, content, and surveying his empire, Nimrod allowed his lieutenants to report on activity and issues of the day. Nimrod gestured towards a tall, thin man standing at the front of his lieutenants. Mebta. Your Majesty, Mebta, his chief lieutenant, bowed deeply. All the work groups are falling behind on the scheduled milestones. I have personally investigated each group and witnessed that their productivity has indeed deteriorated. My concern is that their efforts will decline further. We may not complete the full structure of the tower before the autumn rains. This is highly disturbing, Nimrod stated menacingly. What do you propose? My conclusion, Your Majesty, Mebta continued unperturbed, is that we permit the requested weekly day of rest. Let me provide an example. This brick, Mepta held out in his thin right hand, a solid and attractive-looking brick, was produced early in our construction. I took the liberty of keeping it as a model for future construction. However, this brick, and now Mepta held out his equally thin left hand, demonstrating an ugly, ill-shaped and frail-looking piece. This brick was produced yesterday. I see. And how will a day of rest solve this problem? I would think it would delay us further. The king asked, the frown on his ruddy face growing. Yes, your majesty, Mebta replied. A day of rest does seem at first to go against reason. However, I believe that the main cause for the poor effort is that we are pushing the workers too hard. If they have a chance to recuperate on a consistent basis, I am certain we shall see an improvement in productivity. What will happen if you are wrong, Mebta? I am not. But even if I were, we would at most lose a day of work, Your Majesty. And what solutions could we try then? We would need some way to work them harder, motivate them further. Nimrod sat pensively for a few minutes, looking at Mebta, looking at the distance, and looking at the workers doing their tasks throughout the tower and on the ground below. He stood up suddenly, like an animal about to pounce on his prey. Mebta, I cannot take the chance that you are wrong. I understand, Your Majesty. We must complete the tower before the rains. I agree completely. To show softness at this critical time would have a negative effect on morale. Um, perhaps, Your Majesty? Mebta, you have been a loyal and dedicated lieutenant, Nimrod stated with an ironic grimace on his face. Yes, Your Majesty? Mebta was suddenly confused, not following his liege's thinking as he usually did. You would give your life at my command, without hesitation, Nimrod asked, his grin getting broader. Why, of course, your majesty, Mevta replied slowly, feeling as if a trap had been sprung on him, but still not seeing its contours. Then you will understand what I am about to do. And without further delay, Nimrod vigorously grabbed the tall but thin Mevta, Nimrod held on to the belt by Mebta's waist and the garment by his shoulder and hoisted Mebta over his head. To Nimrod, Mebta was as light as a puppet in a child's hands. 
Nimrod then climbed with Mepta to the top of the tower. Mepta, his eyes wild and confused, held on tightly to the bricks in either hand, almost in a death grip. At the top of the tower, with Mepta over his head, Nimrod called out in a booming voice, My people! My people! Heed the words of your ruler! The man I hold in my hands is Mebta, my chief lieutenant. He feels that we cannot complete our tower in time. He is wrong, and his lack of faith is offensive to the gods. This is what happens to those who do not work hard or do not obey the gods. Nimrod, with great flourish and drama, proceeded to throw Mebta from the roof of the tower. The eyes of every single worker were on Mebta's body. The descent seemed to take forever that the resounding, sickening thud occurred all too quickly. Within moments, the workers started scurrying like ants and returned to their tasks with renewed vigor and energy. Nimrod nonchalantly returned to his two of his lieutenants and said, Make sure to bring up Mepta's two bricks for me. They raced down, each eager to get the bricks first.